Hello and welcome to another episode of Not a New- Another Nutrition Podcast with me, your host, Martin McDonald. Um, this is going to be my shortest episode to date. <laughs> of course it will, Martin. It is going to be a short one because it's <clears throat> something I've spoken about. In brief, or no, a bit more extensively, in the past. And that is I don't know the title of this just yet. It's come from someone asking me the question Martin, can you eat fruit on an aggressive diet? And I was kind of shocked by the question and I sought to understand why the person was asking the question. Because I bang on about this unconditional permission to eat, which means you can eat anything. So why would someone ask me? And this is not someone new. This is someone who follows my work. So I was a bit baffled. And so I just thought, you know what? I'm going to record five to 10 minutes on this. And so it's easily shareable, easily consumable. Easy, try and make it easily understandable. You can eat any food on any diet, kind of, other than elimination diets. <laughs> um, ergo, if you're celiac and need to cut out gluten. Uh, what I mean is, it doesn't matter whether it's an aggressive diet, not aggressive diet, these kind of things. Um, unless you're trying to specifically restrict something, you know, even on a low carb diet, you can probably eat any food. It's simply the quantity that's going to um, dictate whether it's appropriate or not. On a keto diet, you could literally consume pure sugar, Haribo, lollies, lollies. Is that a lolly, mate? Australian um, jellies who says that is that also Australians um, <clears throat> on a low fat diet you could consume butter or olive oil or ghee it's the amount so I can't put it more simply than that you can eat any food but it's the quantity that will change things. Now, fl- fast forward, I am currently doing an aggressive diet where I'm not tracking calories. I have used this term, or this kind of semi-joking term of the eat as few calories as you possibly can diet. Um, or the eat less, exercise more diet, Uh, revolutionary. But essentially I'm eating to be comfortable, but making choices that I know will put me in a calorie deficit. If I have a happy level of hunger and mentally I'm in the right place, I'm just riding that wave of hunger. I'm even sometimes eating when I'm not hungry if I want to consume some extra protein. Because the only thing I'm really paying attention to is ensuring adequate protein intake because I have started weight training again uh, a little bit properly. Um, I have to say a little bit properly for those people who see how I train and I'm a very lazy trainer. Um, But I'm getting back into it. Yesterday I think I even broke a sweat um, and what did I train again? Oh yeah, yeah see that's bad isn't it? You know, I should really have DOMS. Maybe they'll come tomorrow. Maybe I train so hard, I've got that thing where you get the DOMS for the delayed onset of muscle soreness, 48 hours instead of 24. Or maybe I'm such an athlete that I've recovered already. (laughs) Anyway, off topic. Sorry, I'm just paying attention to my protein intake. So, in my instance, eating fruit would mean that I potentially, 
likely eat more calories. Um, it's not bad. It, it'll slow my rate of weight loss. And because I don't want to do this for a long time, because I actually want to build lots of muscle, um, but I just want to start, because I've been out of training, because of lots and lots of different reasons, um, I've just I lost, lost the love for training and I've been incredibly inactive and these things that I always talk about that are just life and you, people just need to go with them with a level of acceptance and not hate themselves and not call themselves lazy and not you know call themselves a fat lazy pig and s stop calling themselves oh, I need to stop eating like a you know insert swear words no you just did what was right for you at that time. Yes, you've not paid attention to it, but why? Be reflective, why didn't you? What else was going on? Is the reason you did that because you treated yourself so badly when you last ate and cut out loads of foods? Because that's a thing. Or was your, was your nutrition absolutely fine and great? And if you can honestly say that to yourself, then, then what else? Well, yeah, I this happened to me. Um, there are lots of things that happen in our lives that change our priorities. People, if people could apply the principles that they put towards other endeavors to their nutrition, they'd be in a lot healthier place mentally around food. And that's a different podcast. And I said I'd keep this short. My point being, if you're eating ad libitum, which I'm kind of doing, um, I'm just eating when I want to, but making choices that I know will put me in a calorie deficit. I am not tracking. This is some of the stuff we teach on MNU. Um, and we don't really teach it in the context of an aggressive diet. We teach it in the context of a more well-rounded, long-term sustainable diet. But I am doing it because I can't be bothered to track. Um, and also because I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to do a, a recording on that, which is, um, you know, tracking versus non-tracking um, and the kind of pros and cons of each. And, um, you know, where, where it's appropriate, where it's not, etc., etc. So with fruit, very simply, <laughs> if I had fruit, like for instance, uh, yesterday I ate um, some 0% Greek yogurt with some whey protein in it. And that, because it's high protein and it tastes super nice, would have satiated me and it tastes nice. But I had a hankering. Is that, does that word translate across the world? I had a hankering for um, some, I wanted to masticate. If you don't know what masticate means, you feel awkward right now, don't you? Mastication, which you have to say right, is the, is chewing. <laughs> um, and so when, you know, when you eat Greek yogurt, um, you don't chew. Obviously, you know, you just kind of swallow. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have the same feel, right? And I also just thought, when when I went to, um, on my world tour, when we went to, where was it? I think it was Dubai when I started doing this. No, it wasn't, it was before that. Anyway, Billy and Sarah, that was Australia. It was, it was one of the cities in Australia. Maybe it was Brisbane or, or Perth. Billy and Sarah every morning were having, they were microwaving frozen berries. And I love cold with hot. You know, um, sticky toffee pudding with cold ice cream. It, the sticky toffee pudding has to be hot. Or even a brownie, it has to be hot with the ice cream. That's the, that's the shizzle when that, you get that combo. Um, you, know, it's all, you know, they also complement each other but rather delightfully. But it's hot and cold. Anyway, they would have microwaved frozen berries. So they would get warm and then they would have them with the cold Greek yogurt. And I, I just don't tend to eat breakfast. I don't wake up overly hungry. But they were having this 
because they were having it and it was like living with flatmates whilst we were traveling for my tour and I was like can you when you make that would you mind making me some as well and I just got into it and it was amazing but then I came back and I stopped doing it for myself anyway last night I wanted to masticate on the frozen berries uh, but microwaved and uh, so it was like having a dessert okay I ate more calories. This is when what I talk about when I talk about unconditional permission to eat anything. If I wanted to chuck some squashies in there, I would. You know, jelly squashies are this thing that I love, okay? They're the best sweets in the world. Look them up. And so I can have that. And I, that meal increased slightly in calories for no greater satiation, no greater switching off of my hunger, but it tastes, tasted amazing. It was nice for me. I looked after my mental health and my relationship with food so that today I carry on and adhere. And I don't finish, even if I could adhere for another whatever, but then as soon as it finishes, Look at these things I've been stopping myself having. And I'm going to end up overeating on those things. Someone actually did ask me yesterday. Do you not worry about gaining the weight back afterwards? I was like, what do you mean? Um, and But the, I know what they mean. It's because they've clearly struggled in this way. And I spent so much time on my tour therefore focusing on this area because it's such it's an area that pe isn't as sexy online to talk about it it isn't as tangible it's not quantitative which people want they want to know their exact macros they want to know their exact calories but they won't flip in just look at their own mentality around food and dieting and themselves and that's the shizzle that makes the difference then you just find, yeah, anyway. So, when not tracking, removing certain foods can help increase or decrease the level of the deficit. When you look at, when you start with someone as a client, for instance, and let's say they don't want to track or you don't want them to track for certain re reasons, it's contraindicated, I mean. Um, you put habits in place. Habits, unfortunately, don't. You have to look at the magnitude of effect. You need to find what's, what I use is this term, low-hanging fruit, which you'll see lots of people in the industry using um, as a result of my teachings, which is super nice that this low-hanging fruit with regards to where am I going to get the biggest impact on calorie deficit with a habit. Where is your low-hanging fruit? For instance, I always use this example, one of uh, our first ever intake, um, one of my longest time followers. He literally just looked at, at his new client's diet and she was having this, you know, a bit like a, I can't remember what they called it, but it was like one of these unicorn frappolatte, chipolatte, mocha, choca, Americano latte thingamajiggers. There's like a thousand calories or something. She was just chilling, consuming that in the morning. Rather than doing anything else fancy to her diet, he literally just had a discussion around that one low hanging fruit. She didn't have to track. She didn't have to even do any of the basics of like, okay, let's start looking at protein feedings and, and elevating that. Just that small change initially. And um, this was someone who had struggled to lose body fat. And you know the outcome. She lost significant body fat before they even went to like habit number two. Um... Her, one of her main things was around exercise as well. So he focused on the exercise and made that one dietary change. And it was super cool uh, when he wrote that in the mentoring lab. Um, she also wasn't in the habit. As she, I'm just going off. She wasn't in the habit of eating in the morning because she was having this. And then so she was kind of doing this like intermittent fasting, but she just wasn't eating till 12. But that's irrelevant. She, ha she wasn't eating in the morning anyway. She was just having this. So in a way, uh, she went from... She, ah, it doesn't matter. You don't care. 
you don't have to cut out foods. Tracking versus non-tracking. does change things. So yeah, enhancing the magnitude of the effect sometimes is what you need. And so I wouldn't start adding like some potato to every one of my meals just because I can have potato because I know it's just going to add. The, the variety of tastes in a meal will encourage you to eat more. And because I'm not weighing them, I don't then account for calories elsewhere. And because it's an aggressive diet, you don't have much room for maneuver in calories themselves. Um, you have to literally swap a food. I'd have to swap chicken for potato, for instance, and that's not an equal swap um, on a macronutrient, you know, particularly protein basis. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. I hope it's helpful. I've covered some massive topics, literally just scratch the surface, but I just feel like if some people need to just think about these really pertinent things in terms of how they think about nutrition how many almonds can i have how many eggs can i have how many the re, the fact you're asking those questions can i eat can i eat can i eat just shows you're coming up from the wrong angle and ergo you're setting yourself up for failure um and i don't want that remember unconditional permission to eat anything but not everything That makes sense. Anyway, we can talk about that another time. Take care. Hope you're well. Until next time, much love.